Today's video is brought to you by Tecron. And for those of you that are familiar with the channel, you know that I have a bunch of old vehicles, a bunch of new vehicles, and Tecron is something that I use in all of them. Whenever I pick up a rig with high miles and I don't know the condition of the fuel system, it gets a bottle Tecron. For my brand new 2021 Toyota Tacoma, my brand new 2021 Jeep Gladiator Diesel, both of them also get Tecron. Because whether you need to clean up an old fuel system or you need to keep your new system nice and clean and keep it reliable, Tecron is a great product for gas and diesel engines. So if you're in the market for a high quality and proven fuel treatment, make sure you check out Tecron. About two and a half years ago, I started this channel and one thing has been a through line in the comment section. That is many of you requesting a shop tour and I have been putting it off forever. And today we are finally gonna get to this subject and I wanna give you a full walk around, a full tour of my shop. When we bought this place six years ago, this was just an empty shell, basically. This, this was a foreclosed property, and someone had come in after it foreclosed, and they stole like all the drywall almost. There was only a little bit here and there. And it's funny, you, I can look at it, and I can see the difference in color from the old drywall to the new drywall. And they took, there was a garage door here, there's a garage door back there. They took all the wiring, of course. They took the breaker box, all that was gone. So first thing I did is I got an electrical permit, I did all the electrical in here and then I got it passed off. I just hung bare minimum lighting so I could fill in these voids and turn them into walls because I don't need three doors coming in, like three full size shop doors coming into a shop. Um, and so that's what I did. This is a wall because I wanted to be able to hang stuff on it. Same story in the back corner. I've got one big door in the front and then a man door over here on the side. The space is 40 foot by 50 foot. And honestly, for those of you that are looking into building a shop, it's really not, if, if it's for automotive, you could do a, a rectangle, you know, it, have a bunch of play, like you could just park a bunch of vehicles in a row and that's kind of cool, right? But for resale, it's nice to have a box because this box is ultra universal. This isn't just a car specific box. If you do CrossFit, you could totally make your a dope CrossFit pad back here. If you do, uh, if you make handbags and you sell them on eBay, you could absolutely turn this into a manufacturing facility uh, because it's just a big square. You can fill it in however you want, and it also makes it just feel bigger. I really like, uh, I like working in a space that it feels this spacious with a tall ceiling in the front and whatnot. For, I came from one car garages and gravel driveways, so I am very appreciative of how fortunate I am to have run across this place. Uh, now, where we are is right up in here. We've got our hand tools, the Milwaukee boxes. We've got, we'll, we'll go through this area here in a minute. Um, the drill press stuff is right behind me. We've got the cabinets over on the other corner and then this basically this whole lower half is just like storage material storage storage for four by fours i've got a i've done a bunch of work in the last week that a lot of you guys haven't even seen i've added a ton of lighting so let's go through it these two milwaukee boxes are where i keep the majority of my hand tools i need two of them believe it or not i just have a lot of tools from all the different vehicles i've owned over the years i've owned like so many different makes and models i have lots of specialty tools and stuff i had to have a way to neatly file that away and these are just the super affordable boxes i think they were like 600 bucks or 700 bucks and i came from the automotive industry where you get a snap-on box for 10 grand or something like that so to me these are a really good value for what you get i just got them at home depot and then the wall of course full of milwaukee i've been a milwaukee fan for many years i used to use their 32 volt uh setup that they had i mean we're talking like 2006 or 7 way before they had their all their M18 stuff. So I've been a fan of Milwaukee for years. I think DeWalt's great too. I just, I prefer Milwaukee. So that's the collection that I have. All the drill stuff, all right here. I have this one set up. Usually I have it set up with a really small drill bit that I just do pilot holes with. And then whatever my actual hole size that I need, I'll put on the bigger drill. And that way, I'm basically just changing out one drill bit for most projects because this one just is for pilot holes only. Uh, and then all these cabinets and stuff are just full of drill bits and whatnot. And I'm still figuring out what to put in the lower cabinets. In fact, I haven't even like leveled these lower cabinets out yet. I basically got everything in here, got it as close as I could to done. And then I had to get back to making videos. Now on this side, I'm going to get a bunch of questions about these cabinets. I believe they're from a company called New Age. They're ultra expensive but there's not a lot of companies that make big metal cabinets like these. So there's not a lot of competition. So I think that, 
I can't remember exactly. I think we spent like eight or nine grand on cabinets, something like that. And we got them on sale. They're very, very, very expensive, but I needed, I really needed a way to file away a bunch of the stuff that I had laying in the back of the shop. The table. I know I'm going to get questions about the table. I would prefer to work on a metal table, but I haven't, I haven't figured out exactly how I want to design and build that yet. So that's just going to keep getting put off. This was a door from a school that my father-in-law used as his desk when he was running job sites. And then when he retired, he said I could have it. And I've been using it as a workbench for a bunch of years. Um, it works fine. A lot of my really small scraps material I put down here. And the reason I do that is because it's a ton of weight down low. So when I'm chucking things in the vise, this doesn't want to budge. So it basically makes sure I don't really have to anchor it to the ground, but it's still light enough that I can move it out of the way of a vehicle or something like that. So that's the reason that I have this set up in that manner. We're not going to go through all these cabinets. You can see like the stand-up ones. It's just, you can set up the, the uh, different shelves and stuff where you need them. It's just a hodgepodge of stuff that I had to bring from the back of the shop to the front to try to get the back of the shop organized. I finally have a place to keep all of my, uh, all of my camera gear. So I've got a whole cabinet. It's just camera gear. It's so nice to not have this all over the place anymore. Um, I'm just trying to figure it out guys. I mean, I, there's no like textbook on how to put together a YouTuber shop so you can <laughs> build four by fours on the internet. And then the rest of this is the same story. You know, you fill one with oil, you fill one with degreaser, you fill one with spray paint, whatever. I, I just, I, it was nice to get so much stuff out of the back of the shop and organize it in a way that it makes it easier to find. This one is going to be all hardware. I've already gotten started moving the hardware up here, but it's going to be a big chore to get all the hard, all my loose hardware from the back and organize it in here. And I'm still trying to figure out a really good system to do it. But as you can see, I at least got it started. And then I have had some questions about this. I should talk about it real quick. This is just a little jammy I got on Amazon and it's a, uh, it's a, like a thread checker and it tells you exactly what the thread pitch is. So all the black ones are metric, all the silver ones are standard and it makes it way easier to figure out the bolt you need. And then it's a lot easier to organize all your stuff. I heat the shop in a with the combination of two different sources. One being a wood burning stove. I live in the Pacific Northwest, wood is everywhere. And then I have a diesel heater uh, that I'll use in conjunction. Actually works pretty dang good. This whole back corner of the shop is just a huge work in progress. I finally have a way, or I have enough space that I can store a bunch of my big tools on wheels back here, which is killer. But this is basically a junk drawer right now in the corner here. I, a lot of this is still going to get funneled into the cabinets up there. It's just finding the time, you know, we all have these. <laughs> I know I'm not the only one that has this experience where you just, you're constantly trying to upkeep everything while you're also trying to get your work done. Now, a lot of people probably thought this was in my house, but what I wanted, I'm still experimenting with this. I'm trying to figure out how to become a better storyteller. And I like having a backdrop where I can cut back and forth between a, sh a view of me in the shop and a view of me with a nice backdrop. I would have loved to have stained the whole wall wood like this. Uh, I just didn't have the money. This is a pallet. I just tore a pallet apart. I used brad nails. I brad nailed it to a sheet of plywood and I stained the whole thing and boom. My wife likes it so much. She said that if I get rid of this in the shop, which we might, um, she'd like to have it as our headboard. So this could turn into our headboard on our bed. We'll see. Uh, let's see what else let's talk about this area back here. This is way different than the last time you guys saw it. First off, I finished the shelving up top there along these two sections because eventually I want like the whole rim of the back of the shop to just be these boxes labeled to where it's way easier to find stuff that I need. And I'm trying to get as much off the floor as possible. So this is going to end up being my sheet metal area. Right now we have two engines on stands. But eventually I want to have more sheet working tool, sheet metal working tools back here. Um, and this just, this whole spot is going to be for working with thin gauge sheet metal. We have some projects coming up that we're going to be doing a lot of using this sheer break and uh, slip roll in order to like build the floor of my TJ and stuff. But we'll talk about all that when that project finally comes. And then I have been working like crazy to finally get all this up on the wall. It was driving me nuts because Many of you might remember, I have my material all stored right here, wedged in between this side of the shop and the, the, uh, the tires on the Jeep. 
And it just, it just sucked having to trip over that all the time. And so I finally took the time these last couple days, I built a way to store all this, to get it all up off the floor. I recycled a ton of metal that I just didn't need anymore. You know, we all have those short chunks that you don't want to get rid of. And I still have some of that, but instead of having a hundred pieces like this, I have, you know, 20. <laughs> so that's what the back of the shop looks like. For those of you looking to build a shop this size, one big problem is just everything scales up so much. One is lighting. Lighting has been a problem of mine since we got the shop. Originally, it was all fluorescent lighting and it wasn't very good and it took forever to warm up. It's pretty cold up here. And uh, I've been slowly, I added a bunch of LED lighting and then I've been slowly phasing out of all that fluorescent lighting with LED lighting. I just counted it up. We've got 47 lights in here. And for doing video, it's just bright enough. There's still lots of times where I'm gonna have to add light to whatever it is I'm working on so you can clearly see it. It just takes a lot to, to light up a space like this, especially the fact that it's not finished or painted. If this was, if all the drywall was done and it was painted, it would be even brighter, which would be nice, but we're not there. I, I, uh, I tried to, I got a few, I got a quote from a few different companies about drywall and all of them were above 20 grand. So. The drywall will either be done by me or it'll be done by whoever we sell the house to. <laughs> we want to move because I want to give my wife and kids a better house to live in, uh, but we're having a hard time finding something affordable uh, that also still has a shop that I can play in and make these videos. So anyway, the last thing we should talk about, last two things. Let's talk about electrical, electrical plugs. I have one, two, three. I have three 220 outlets in here. Uh, I wanted to have lots of places to pull power from for just all the different things you use 224, right? A welder, plasma cutter, that kind of thing. And then I did, I did do the whole shop with air and I have one, two, three, four. I've got four little stub outs um, that are tied into the air system. I have the compressor located outside, just kind of under like a little overhang on the corner of the shop. It's like a 60 gallon 220. Um, it's a badass compressor, Co keeps up with everything that I need. And then I ran the entire system as a plumber. I ran it all with Weir's bow. It's just like this plastic flexible. I didn't want to have a whole bunch of nineties and stuff because you'll start to get friction loss if you ha have air trying to pass through too many nineties. So being able to have like this spaghetti style pipe with very, very little fittings, it makes it to where it has pretty good flow considering how far some of this stuff is from the compressor. I think the best way to end this video would just be talk about future plans. Plans for the shop. I would love to have all the drywall finished in, um, depending on how long we stay here, uh, I could, who knows? Uh, also a lift, people ask me about a lift all the time. Why don't you have a lift? I would love to have a lift. I don't want to buy a lift and then we find a place and then I have to move the lift. I would rather just install it and just let it be where it's gonna be. Um, and a lift takes up a lot of space. A lot of people don't realize the footprint of a lift is big. Right now, I can, I can squeeze four vehicles in here if I have to. And if I put a lift in here, it's gonna make it to where it's gonna crowd. It'll be crowded with three. So we'll see. I would like a lift. It's gonna make it so much easier on some, like especially suspension, man, to be able to have a uh, two post lift, lift up the body, take all your suspension off. It's just, <laughs> it'd be so nice. But uh, we'll see, maybe one day. In the meantime, I'm just gonna keep on rocking it. I'm, I feel very fortunate to have a big dry space to work because it wasn't always that way. It took me a long time to get here and a lot of hard miles to get here, but I'm finally here. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you wanna help support the channel, you can go to thedirtlifestyle.com, t-shirts, snacks, hats, neck gaiters, all that stuff. Uh, Patreon, we've got another Patreon meet. We're gonna do a meet and greet at a bar here in like a week, I think, or two weeks, two weeks. And then we're gonna go uh, camping, a little snow camping with the Patreon people. So if you're into that kind of thing, make sure you uh, join that community. We have a link to it on our page, or on our, uh, on our website, excuse me, a little tired. <laughs> um, if, you, uh, if you wanna follow me on social media, I'm at Nate. We'll see you next time.